So, typically, when you're working on an older vehicle, unless you're going for a 100% numbers matching original restoration, guys will go for more power and perhaps quite a bit newer of an engine, right? Well, if you haven't figured out by now, I am not the typical guy. Older, in my book, is so much often better. Which is why in our 86 GMC project, I am putting an engine that is 24 years older than the vehicle itself. We're going with the 62 327. Now, if there was ever any bright spot, any absolute positive part of the incredibly mundane 305 from the 80s, it was this little unit here, the HEI distributor. These things have been dropped in every small block Chevy from the mid 70s on back to increase performance. Actually, I think the, the uh, motivation behind most of that is to get away from the points because guys just don't like dealing with them, but they are an excellent design and unit, save for the modulator that will burn out and then you have absolutely no spark. Where, with points, you could often clean them up and at least get home. But, they're excellent. And the aftermarket community has also converted this design to many other makes. So you can find an, an HEI distributor for your favorite Ford, you know. Put them in, put them in stove bolt Chevys, put them in Ford six cylinders, everything. So true to form, I am going to remove the one good thing that could be said for the 305 that came in the, in the truck we're working on because this thing looks absolutely out of place in the look we're going for, right? So, yeah. While the entire rest of the world tries to go to this, I go away from it. That makes sense. Your options are virtually unlimited as far as small block Chevy distributors. You can go old school with points and the smaller cap. You can go HEI. You can go Pertronics with a smaller cap. You can go full on performance with the MSD ignition boxes and on and on and on it goes. It's just limited to the money you want to spend. Well, of course, I went to my stash of parts and I pulled this out of the box of what I had. This is a an original Delco Remy 1111015 which translates to a mid 60s small block 283 327 distributor. Now I'm almost positive this one was put in a 65 Impala because in the 80s my grandpa bought a, 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 a wrecked 65 Impala convertible and restored it and uh, he bought a second 283 for it the original was in pretty bad shape smoking really bad probably needed to be bored and re-ringed and uh, he just bought a good 283 put it in and this is either from the original distributor from the factory of his convertible or it's from that second engine that he put in so we are going to go through this thing. Believe it or not, I am going to put points in this 86 GMC for now. Perhaps someday on the wish list is a Pertronix or Delco or standard electronic ignition unit that you just pop in here in place of the points. I am not afraid of points in the least. I have... Guys, every vehicle from the mid 70s previously ran on ignition points. It is not a big deal. Yes, it's something to keep in tune, but that's the worst that can be said for it. So when working with an old distributor, the first thing I would check out is shaft bushings. If you're gonna buy a, an old one, a salvaged one, a new one, you get one on eBay, whatever, you're at a swap meet, you're looking at them, the first thing to can be considered, but not necessarily afraid of, is the shaft bushings. These are nice and tight. Now if you're watching this and your bushings do feel worn out, you need to replace them, 
It's very simple. Drive this roll pin out right there. This gear will come off. You can pull the shaft out from the top. Replace the bushings. Get online. Search them up. You'll find them. Press them back in. Put that all back together and away you go. But I don't need to do that work here. I have done it on... I think I did it on that uh, 48... 216 rebuild. There's a video working on the distributor. Um, so you can check that out. The next thing I'd check out is your centrifugal advance. And basically if you hold the shaft still and you should be able to put tension on the springs and they should snap back home. Um, you can adjust these things but a word of caution, if you don't know where you're headed, don't do it. Um, it needs to be in the engine. It needs to be able to run. You need information of what, at what RPM should your advance be at. So you're using a timing light, you're running the engine up to a particular RPM, you're checking your advance, and if it's off according to the chart, then you adjust the spring tension. But that's another thing I'm not going to get into here because it's not necessary. Centrifugal advance is working fine. If I did not have good spring tension, if these were loose, did not necessarily snap back, then we would look at getting new springs for that. First thing I'm going to do is test this vacuum advance canister to see whether I need to purchase a new one or not. We can just clean this one up hopefully, if not. So I'm going to take my vacuum gauge, sticker on there, and I want to see two things. A, that it moves when I put vacuum on it, and B, that it holds the vacuum. So we're going to be looking for movement right here at this plate. we've certainly got. Okay, right now it's at 20 inches of vacuum and I'm just gonna hold this here for a minute or so and make sure she stays. Well, that's good enough for me. I'll let the vacuum off and it should spring back. Okay, so that's good news. That works. I'm going to pop the point set out. I've already, let me turn this here for you. Screws are already loose. I've got a screw loose somewhere, that's for sure. Take this out. Wicks as dry as a bone, but I wouldn't expect anything else. Points look like they've about had it. Here's the cap. Probably damage from just rolling around and being chucked around on the shelf and in storage. Who knows? Um, I'm going to take the condenser off. I'm going to go after the vacuum advance. I think it'd be easier just to use vacuum to get it out of the way than trying to pry it. So there we go. I'm going to pop the lead out here, our distributor lead, and I think that is as far as I am going to go. 
Okay, at this point I'm just going to go to the wire wheel, wire brushes, brake cleaner, just clean and blow out everything I possibly can. Might shoot some oil down the shaft. Um, I only need to worry about painting. You know, this is all in the engine. So, painting the cast right here. I'll tape off the tag. Um, yeah, that's really it. So, I will get back to you in a minute. That's pretty much as far as I'm going to go. Um, looking a lot better. There again, if you want to go any farther, want to take the plate out, um, you're going to have to take the shaft out, which means driving the pin out, the gear, pull the shaft, get the plate off, then you can clean down in there. Um, I don't see the point, personally, but if you do, if you're a perfectionist about this stuff, which I normally try to be up to a point, you know, but under a cap, under a plate, never see it. I, I really don't think it's worth the time. So, and I also forgot to point out, um, you can get like on like Rock Auto, a, a uh, remanufactured Cardon distributor, points, vacuum, cap, rotor, springs, bushings, everything, 100% new gone through tested um, about eighty ninety dollars so you can weigh that in the balance it'll be aluminum not the original cast iron but uh, most people don't care um, I know I'm an oddball but this is just how I roll if you're the kind of guy that just likes to throw new parts at a project go for it I'm not gonna talk down on you um, I personally see no point in throwing new parts at something when the old ones are perfectly fine. So 20 seconds at the wire wheel, a nickel's worth of chrome paint, and we're good to go again. It'd be cool to replate these with zinc, but I really don't know what that would do getting that solution down inside there. So. Chrome paint it is. Well, I didn't bring any masking tape out to the shop. I forgot that. So I'm using the tape you can use on everything but ducts. Ducts. And that'll be fine. Actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe central heating originally was... There were cardboard ducts. And I assume that's where this stuff was invented for. What this stuff was invented for. Also, this just in, I took the band off, the ID tag. This is cast iron gray engine enamel. Oh, come on. Cast iron engine enamel, take two. Ugh. Rust oleum, semi gloss black protective enamel, take one. Alright, I'm going to put my weights and springs back on. Just a little dab of oil down these pivot pins here.
oil on my finger. Now I happen to have a new lead in my stash of parts. Um, everything looks very similar. I'm just not too sure if the grommet is a little bit bigger diameter. I'm going to try it. And no big deal if it's not going to work. Gonna add a little oil to that grommet there. just to help get it through. Snapped right into place, so I guess I'll use it. Clean up the other one and keep it in an emergency, for an emergency. See, there you go. I already got ahead of myself, just bolted this vacuum advance unit in and wasn't paying any attention to the hardware I was using. So No big deal, but this should have a short little lead on it. And that will go to the one screw. Yeah, that will go to the one screw under the contact points right there. So let's just get those out. lead under there Now this distributor lead will go here and also the one from the condenser will go here. That doesn't really want to go on there, but we'll wait for that. Um, why don't we set our points? Now this of course is just an initial setting, but as most of you will know, I'm looking at the the wear block, the rub block, back in here and I need that on the peak of one of your eight points so where your points open the widest that's where you want it and specs say 19 thousandths new 16 used 
I only have, I go from 18 to 20 on my feeler gauge set, so I'm going to do 18. My Allen screw in here, or my wrench in there. I'm going to close it a bit because it's pretty wide. I'll just go with the 18. I'll just go, you know, it might drag a little bit, but just nice and loose. There, it's just barely dragging. So I'll just back it off just a touch. And we'll call that close enough. So yeah, we are now set at our initial 19 degrees. Um, when we put it in the vehicle, run it, get it warmed up, we're setting timing. We will have a dwell meter on here and we will make sure it is at 30 degrees dwell. Um, and if you are doing that with an older distributor, if you have a dwell meter on it and that needle's moving around on you, you probably have a worn out distributor shaft or the bushings or both um, but yeah this is good initial setting and we will come back to that later when we're running what does that say blue streak okay so we're going to test the condensers now condensers there's just that's just one of those things there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of information out there and it's probably because it's just generally regarded as something to replace when you're in there replacing points throw a condenser in there and away you go from what little bit of information I've been able to find out um, I'm just going to show you the easiest way I have come across this is not my my own original intelligence here but the easiest way to I have come across to test these and uh, Assuming it's right or wrong, I don't know, uh, but I'm assuming it's right. Actually, the man um, that I watched do this had an actual, uh, it was a multimeter lauded to be an actual condenser capacitor tester. So I'm assuming this information is correct. Now, my, my personal fluke meter does not have, what you need is this little, symbol here this is micro farads and nano farads symbol mine does not have that does not have that ability i have diodes but not that so this is my work um, this is the multimeter i carry my service truck and so i put it on the diode test and hit the yellow button to get nano farads and i hit the range to get micro which is what you want and let's just test the new one point two three you know and it, it it may just slowly climb on you because they are a capacitor and they will um, absorb energy basically so the new ones in the point twenties basically if it's if it's zero, you probably have an open. If it's out of limits, you probably have a short in it. And anything else it's going to be probably means it's at least operable. The old one is reading higher. Just a little bit. There are many videos on testing these, and most involve analog meters and charging and discharging these things. And... Uh, watching the sweep of the gauge but this is the easiest way I have found to do it without having an actual condenser tester and really in the real world this is probably all irrelevant because you should just replace it anyway so there you go alright now that we know we got a good one put it in get all the little 
holes lined up with the little tabs on the breaker plate. Well, just determined to be difficult. You get in there. I'm going to replace this terminal that keeps this up. I don't like that much anyway. How's that going to work for you? Right, I end up going sideways with it. I don't really like it because it's got these little raised sides around the screw head and so it's got a bend. Much rather would have had the flag style of terminal end without the uh, insulating thing on it, but it will work. And I have those at home if I'd want to replace it. So we'll put the cap on. This is a standard blue streak, so it's blue. I also got a cap that matches, but didn't want to use that. I had a gray Borg Warner on the shelf, so I brought that along. I actually ordered an AC Delco, which is black. So I will end up putting that on. But for the purpose of today, does it feel to you like I'm not very well prepared? Anyway, I didn't show you underneath the cap. You have a square and a round peg. And it's just like kindergarten, you know, just line the same shapes up. Then on the cap, you've got a square notch and a square tab. So just go till it falls in place just do what comes naturally you know and then hey what's wrong with these okay what's wrong now it pushes in A little, a little stubborn, are we? Probably why it was sitting on my shelf. There we go. Well, you turkey. this one would even work. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah, I think it will. Now what's wrong with you? Goodness. I have never seen the light. I'm a victim of circumstance. <laughs> Yeah, definitely want to switch to that other cap when it comes. Okay, that was a lot harder than it needed to be. So there you go, guys. A restored, ready to go, refurbished, 
original 65 small block Chevy distributor. Um, I feel like it went a little haphazardly perhaps, couldn't use the paint I wanted, had to get a different condenser, mixed <laughs> a, a uh, standard rotor with a Borg Warner cap, not even the cap I want to end up with. Um, but other than that, everything went great, you know? But that should give you a pretty good idea if you have an original, you want to keep it original, you want to fix it up, there you go. So now, like I said in the beginning, we'll start out running it with points in the 86 GMC. Kind of crazy, I know. But that's, that'll just be one of the things on the wish list that someday I may get the uh, electronic replacement for that. Um, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, thanks a lot for coming along on this little jaunt down distributor lane. Like I keep telling you guys, we're going to paint that cab, put the engine together, and then put it in, and maybe figure out a way to temporarily start it and run it. So stick around. Come back soon. God bless you guys. I thank you so much for spending this time with me. We will see you later. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You know, I don't feel safe riding around on a tire like that. I don't blame you. That could get you in a lot of trouble. Maybe I'd better change it. I would if I were you. <laughs>